welcome back to my allotment. Today it's another really hot sunny day, it's about 22 degrees. Uh, we're approaching the end of April, it's Easter Sunday tomorrow and I'm here in the woodland corner where it's a little bit cooler in the shade and I can show you how I'm potting up my dahlias. What I've done so far is I've set up a big tarp here to catch any compost that falls so that I'm not wasting any. Here I've got a big tub of compost that I've mixed with perlite to give it some drainage. That's what we'll be using to repot them in, this will be fresh compost. <coughs> Excuse me. And here are some of the dahlias that I've got um, to pot up. I've got about, I haven't even counted really, I think it's about 18 to do. Ice cream van. You'll hear that quite a lot. I'm on the top of a hill and it's the city centre over there. So whenever the ice cream van goes by, we can all hear it and it taunts me because I would really love an ice cream right now. So this is one of the dahlias out of the many that I've got to pot up. Now last year was the first year that I grew them so they're all bought brand new last year and I dug them up around um, October, November time and potted them into these pots with some spent compost. This compost is what was used in my chili plants um, I kept them in the same pots, so it was just a case of digging the dailies up and putting them in here as I took the chilies out. It's amazing how much the dahlia tubers grow in a year, and from when I bought them, they were just tiny little tubers, and some of them, like these two here, have become really, really big tuber systems. And we can divide them, um, which I might be doing, we'll just have to see. Um, what they look like when I get them out. Now these dahlias spent winter in my basement where it was cool and dry so that they could be dormant and just have a little sleep over the winter months. Some people prefer to leave them in the ground. Um, that all depends really on what sort of soil you have and what your conditions are like. If it's really really wet and you have heavy clay soil then it might get too wet and the tubers may rot. But if you're further down south where it doesn't get quite so cold, quite so wet, and you might have a lighter soil, then you can get away with leaving them in the ground over winter and just topping them with a thick layer of mulch. I lifted mine because I wanted to move some around and I did plan to plant those tulips, but they never came up because of the rat or squirrel. But that's in the past, I'm not gonna talk about that anymore. <laughs> so let's start potting these up. Now, first thing to do is take out the label and keep it safe because we don't really want to be forgetting which one we have. So I'm just going to tip the pot on its side and carefully remove the tuber. They're quite strange, ugly things when you look at them. Uh, just give this one a bit of a shake. That's it, I've got most of the compost now off already. And this one is called White Unester. And I think I only had one or two of these tubers, so it would be nice to divide it, but having looking at the, uh, the tuber, I don't think it's quite big enough and there's not a clear sign where I would divide it. If this had two or three stems and was really big and bulky, then I could perhaps chop it into sections, but I'm not gonna do it with this one. But the other option is to actually take some cuttings. So if you take a close look at the tuber, you can see some signs of growth already. I've got a shoot there, there's another eye there, just above this big one here. And underneath here, I've got another one here and another shoot coming off there. And it's possible that if I get about three or more shoots coming off here, I could chop them off here and actually root them separately. So it's great to see that the tubers are already waking up from their winter dormancy and I've got some new growth appearing already. Now if you're interested in taking cuttings from your dahlias or making some divisions, there's a lady on Instagram called Zoe at Swan Cottage Flowers and she and her husband run their own business and they grow cut flowers for brides and for special occasions. And on her Instagram stories, she shares some amazing tips and advice on growing your own flowers. So do check her out because she is a wonderful woman and has given me so much knowledge that I am really grateful for. Okay, so back to the potting on. I'm gonna empty all of this spent compost because I'm not gonna be using it for my dahlias. And the pot size that you need depends on the size of your tuber really and it varies from a two litre up to a 10 or 15 litre, um, depending on how big it is. And you want it to fit 
so that it has room to grow. See that? That's a bit tight really. I should probably get a bigger pot. It can be quite difficult to find pots big enough and I'll let you in on a bit of a tip. And most of my black pots of this size were actually from supermarkets and I didn't buy them. Um, what these are used for is for storing the flowers that they have in bouquets on sale. And I went to my local supermarket and I was very friendly and they know me quite well there so um, I just asked if I could take some of the empty ones and not all supermarkets will let you take them. Um, I believe they do actually send them back to the depot to be reused again um, but if they let you take them then that's great. Um, just drill some holes in the bottom and then you're good to go. So I'm now going to fill the bottom of the pot with two or three inches of compost. Now you can actually cut the old stem off. That's where the flowers grew from last year and obviously you get lots and lots of flowers from one stem. So now I'll get three or four new stems off of these green growths here. Now since I'm not taking cuttings from this one I'm going to bury it completely. And I'm just going to give it a shake so it gets all around those tubers. Expose the top just a little bit and then pop the label in. And that's that one done. Next up is Cafe au lait. Now this one is the creme de la creme of the Dahlia world. Often used for bridal bouquets because of its beautiful ivory cream colours. Now all this spent compost I'm actually just going to put onto my beds after I'm done today. Whoa, look, lots of new growth on this one. And it's pretty huge, again. Now because I've got kind of like two tuber systems growing here, I've got one here and one here, I'm actually just going to tease these two apart. And I might be able to get a knife down there. There we are. So I've just divided my cafe au lait. If you get any loose tubers that accidentally pop off, um, it doesn't matter. And they will grow if they've got an eye on them. This one, however, does have a little speck just there, which could be an eyelet. I'm not sure. So I'm just going to pop it onto some compost and we'll see if it grows or not. So now I've got twice as much, which is brilliant. Um, I can put them and spread them further out along my allotment and you can see I've got growth points coming out there and on this one I've got an eye there but I can see eyes all over the bottom of this one too. So I'll pot these up separately and you can see there it's just a join. They haven't damaged any of the tubers by separating them that way. They really do get so big. <laughs> now it's just a case of potting this up so I've got another large pot here and we're just going to do the same. I haven't watered this compost yet by the way um, but once the pots are all done I will give them a good watering. Now because I've got so many shoots I could even have one two three four five I could have six shoots on this one plant which is quite a lot so I'm going to leave the base exposed again just in case I want to take some more cuttings because this really is a beautiful dahlia to multiply your stock of. So now like before I'm just going to bury it in the compost and I'm going to bury the shoots too. I've decided I'm not going to take any cuttings from this one because I've got quite enough pots already and it can get quite expensive with all the compost that you need to buy. So there we are. Let's not forget the label and that's one of two Café au lait. Now this piece just fell off of this main plant as I was taking it out, probably because I didn't put it in a big enough pot, but I can see it's got a shoot on there. So that's now a separate division from this massive clump that's accidentally already divided itself. And that is my creme de cassis, which is a lovely purple flower. Although I found that the colors did seem to change quite a bit. Already I can see it's got a growth point here. So I have to be very careful not to knock that off. And another one there. Oh, this is brilliant. <laughs> That's just fallen off. And look, it's got a huge shoot on it. 
Well, I'm going to keep that one plant as it is since it already has um, signs of growth on it and I've already got two cuttings that accidentally came off from the plant so I'm going to pot this up as it is. Since this tuber is actually much smaller than all the others I'm going to plant it into a much smaller pot otherwise I run the risk of overwatering it and the tuber could rot away if it gets too wet. I'm also going to plant it quite deep up this shoot otherwise this is quite flexible and it could easily be knocked and damaged. Well, I hope that gives you a little insight into how I'm starting off my dahlias this year. I'm gonna move these into the greenhouse on Zoran's allotment where it's frost free, it's nice, warm and dry, and they're gonna stay in these pots until I plant them out around the beginning of June and the reason we put them into pots is so that they get nice and established they're not going to get too attacked by slugs or snails and they're going to be much more vigorous strong plants when it comes to putting them out. We'll water them slightly we want the soil to be um, damp not too wet and not too dry there's just enough moisture so that they can start to grow because you've got to bear in mind they don't have many roots on them just yet so they can't absorb too much moisture. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.